We are in Ocala. Yes, sir. For our rail fan weekend with these people and somebody over there who doesn't want to somebody be on film right now. <laughs> yeah. But we'll, uh, we Long got a couple coming. trains coming already, so we'll yeah. get everybody together and we'll catch what we can. Okay. Sounds good. Foamer. Sounds good. I am a foamer. <laughs> Our Ocala weekend rail fan meetup would consist of rail fanning, fun activities, and just acting dumb. You'll see all of the above in this video. First train to show up on this trip was Q453, southbound daily mixed freight from Waycross, Georgia to Miami, Florida. fans not familiar with the city of Ocala like myself will take note. Starting here at Magnolia Avenue and continuing south through the downtown city, this section of the S-Line is a quiet zone. So besides the occasional extra friendly crews, there will be virtually no horns. there wouldn't be any more trains until about sunset so from here me and the group took a trip over to galaxy west lanes and went bowling for about two more hours go for it Woo. Not that bad. <laughs> oh. Don't believe you, just watch. Hey! We didn't take a lot of videos, but the two hours we were there was an absolute blast. Leaving the bowling alley at just before 8 p.m., we missed the southbound stack train to Tampa Q045 by roughly five minutes. But we had the whole night ahead of us to rail fan, so we weren't too worried. Setting back up camp for the night just south of Ocala's Magnolia Avenue crossing, we sat for about 20 minutes watching this last sunset of July. Not long into the night came our next train, the northbound stack train out of Tampa every night, Q046 with a short train and CSX 527 in the lead. This unit being one of CSX's sticker engines, this one for the NC and STL, or Nashville, Chattanooga, and St. Louis Railway. Unfortunately, Tampa's intermodal business seems to be shrinking day by day, as these trains are commonly getting shorter. They do increase in length and traffic time to time, but there are times where he is very small. However, regardless of his size, 46 and 5 commonly carry UPS trailers, which make them at the very top of the dispatcher's list regardless. And there are the nights he doesn't. At the very end of this trip, we'll catch a Q046 that is completely empty. About 15 more minutes pass and Q441 shows up. Here's our southbound haul of daily freight from Waycross, Georgia to Tampa, Florida. With two GEs and one EMD. That EMD headed to Tampa, obviously, for switching service. Another no 
note-taking opportunity for those of us not familiar with Ocala's layout. The track layout through practically all of downtown Ocala is curvature, besides the random straightaways that we're on right now, so all trains coming through Ocala usually won't be going any faster than this. I'd say this is around 25 to 30, maybe 35 miles per hour. Here is K812, northbound jumbo covered hoppers filled with diammonium phosphate, bound for interchange at Chicago Clearing, Illinois to the Canadian National. Thanks to Larry for the heads up on this one. Larry was taking our new friend Noah back to his house and headed south to Zephyr Hills to pick up a friend of ours, Nick. I'll have a link to his channel as well as everybody's down in the description. Also, I should have mentioned earlier, the people out with us at the moment, besides Larry and Nick and Noah, is my friend Daniel from Folkestone, my buddy Chase, and his parents. We heard on the radio that K812 would be stopping around Silver Springs to meet this train, Q603, southbound mixed freight from Waycross, Georgia to Winston, Florida. These two trains would be stopping nose to nose for either a paperwork or crew swap. I'm not sure which one it was. final train for tonight showed up at around midnight. Northbound Q442 for Waycross, Georgia coming out of Tampa with empty mixed freight and loaded Tropicana reefers with a wide variety of power tonight. A 1990s era AC4400 CW still in yellow nose 2 paint, one of CSX's rebuilt SD70 MACEs or MESAs as I call them, two GP38-2s, and another AC4400 CW. Q42's marker light would end the first night out here, but we would be up a little bit earlier than the rest and get out to the tracks to immediately hear things popping up on the radio. What wasn't clear yet, but in a few minutes the mystery train was revealed to be NO41, an as-needed loaded coal train from Evansville, Indiana to Taft's OUC power plant near Orlando. This morning, with one of CSX's rebuilt AC4400s, a CM44AH, number 7000.
interesting thing about NL41 today is that with most coal trains running through Florida, he had a DPU engine on the bottom, pushing. To help with gradients and other weight factors on their multi-day journey from Indiana to Orlando. This would be the only train we catch in Ocala for the morning. We wouldn't be back here until the late evening as we would spend most of today doing other fun activities like another round of bowling, go-karts, and mini golf. After a day filled with fun activities and fun times with friends I love, we came back to the tracks in Ocala. We were only here about 20 minutes before Q045, the train that we happened to miss the night before, showed up from the north. Quite a friendly engineer on this one tonight, with two tier 4 GEs hauling a short train of containers. About 45 more minutes would bring us our next train just before sundown. CSX Q441, our daily haul of mixed freight for Tampa. For this train, I took the opportunity to put the drone up and give you guys an idea of what the track layout through this part of Ocala looks like. At the very top of your screen, you can see the train passing 8th Avenue, taking one long curve before crossing 9th Street the last crossing of Ocala that is not within the no horn zone. Then makes one last curve before crossing the Florida Central Railroad at the old Amtrak station and making it right to us.
next one would come about half an hour later, Q046, the nightly northbound stack train from Tampa to Jacksonville. Me, Nick, and Chase decided to just sit back for this one. No photography, no special angles, just one camera, chairs, and our own two eyes. Almost right on 46's tail was this train, Q442, northbound mixed freight traffic to Waycross from Tampa. He was almost all empty tonight besides those Tropicanas, so he got here pretty quickly. passes and we get another northbounder Q604 mixed freight Winston to Waycross <laughs> and the sulfur empties turned to mixed freight empties, coming from local customers around Lakeland and Mulberry, headed back north for another load. In another half hour, we get a green signal for a northbound, but a headlight for a southbound. Dispatcher has coordinated a meet between the southbound Q603 mixed freight from Waycross to Winston and the northbound Q178 nightly intermodal containers from Winter Haven to Jacksonville right here at Ocala. action would be over for tonight so while Chase and Daniel went back to the hotel me and Larry stayed out for one more train Q177 the southbound sister of Q178 nightly intermodal from Jacksonville to Winter Haven he was only about 30 minutes away and we don't catch this train very often so we stayed the extra mile just to catch this last one <laughs>
that 177 was gone, that would pretty much end Ocala's action for the rest of the night. So it was our time to go back to the hotel. And once we got up the next morning, we said goodbye to all of our friends who made this weekend unforgettable, and we parted our ways. But me, Larry, and Nick were able to get out to the tracks for just a bit longer to see what else we could catch. And our timing on this trip was impeccable, because as soon as we got to the tracks, the radio was lighting up with a train on the way already. The dispatcher was talking to a high railer about a train coming past Spar. So we moved up to 9th Street that I mentioned earlier for the possible catch. Checking the signal cantilever at Ocala Station, we saw a high green, which was telling us that in fact there was a train coming southbound for us. And within another 10 minutes, the mystery train was revealed to be Q453, southbound mixed freight from Waycross headed to Miami. Note is the second engine on 453 today, an SD70 MAC or SD70 MAC. This one, though not flared, still has not been rebuilt into an SD70 MACE or MACE. A little bit of confusion to clear up here. My favorite version of the SD70 MACs are the ones with the flared radiators. 4582 and the ones that are being rebuilt do not have flared radiators. These have more like flat radiators. I'm not sure if CSX will ever rebuild the flared Max into Maces or not, but so far they've only rebuilt about 25 of the flat SD70s. clears Ocala heading southbound and from here we would begin heading south too but looking off to the east we can see some storms from the outer bands of hurricane I don't even want to try to pronounce his name because it's that dumb but you know what I mean there's a hurricane on the east coast and we would be keeping an extra eye out on our way south to stay safe luckily all we would hit is the outer bands of the storm coming south which were nothing more but a typical Florida thunderstorm lasting no more than five minutes and soon after, up comes that high railer that the dispatcher was talking to earlier, which told us 453 was coming. Since our home was far south of Tampa and Larry was taking Nick back to his home in Zephyr Hills, we would end up following Q453 southward to Vitus Junction, making our next location Coleman. We saw 453 switching at Wildwood, but by the time we got there, he was almost done. So we leapfrogged him to Coleman, which is the very south end of the double track that goes through Wildwood. 453 would be powering out of a stop here after picking up his conductor around Turnpike. our way further south, we're ahead of Q453 again by the time we make it to Vitus Junction, and by this time we had also gone through our first patch of storms from the hurricane on the east coast. The rain had already passed by the time we got to Vitus, but Q453 was not too far behind, so with Larry and Nick pulling up at the crossing just down from us, 
we would get our last shot of Q453 here at Vitus Junction. Vitus Junction is where the Vitus subdivision, which Q453 is turning on to, diverges to head into Lakeland and Lakeland Junction, and off to the right is the Yeoman subdivision, which diverges off to the right and heads through Plant City, Zephyr Hills, and Tampa. off into the dampened wilderness speeds Q453 and we would continue south with Larry and Nick after saying our final goodbyes to Plant City and a meet up with my friend Dalton for his birthday. It happened to be his birthday today and since we had planned to make a stop in Plant City we invited him out to meet us and he was able to come out so we were able to catch our last two trains with the birthday man. And yes you too Casey. Our first train here would be Q046, the nightly stack train from Yucita Yard to Jacksonville. I'm not sure if you guys could remember after watching almost 20 more minutes of video, but I did mention at one point or another that we would catch an 046 that was completely empty. Well, this is it. All empties headed out of Yucita Yard to Jacksonville tonight. A bear table train is what I think they call it. <laughs> Epic Fomer moment. Here is Q442, the last train of our outing, nightly mixed freight from Yeoman Yard to Waycross, Georgia. A fairly short train tonight. 442 was mainly these loaded cement hoppers coming north out of Brooksville and empty auto racks on the bottom coming north empty out of Drew Park. He did have a little bit of miscellaneous here and there, but not much. There goes 442 ZOT, and it would be the last ZOT that we would see on this entire unforgettable trip to Ocala and back. An amazing thanks to everyone who came out and met up this weekend. You're the reasons that this weekend will be unforgettable. And happy 15th birthday to my awesome friend Dalton. I'm glad we could meet up for this short time. Same for you, Casey. I'll have a link to everybody's YouTube channels in the description. And driving home under the final sunset, 
This is Coda Beaner, and I'll see you next time on the Sunshine State Rails.